I obviously cover a lot of adult animated comedies here on the channel, and while I have gotten a lot of requests for it, one that I've never really touched is Family Guy. And while the show does tend to have a bit of a bad reputation, and a lot of haters, there's one thing that cannot be denied. It is popular. It apparently was the single most watched series on Hulu in 2022, and the series is now 21 seasons deep with no signs of stopping. Now, when I was younger, I was a huge Family Guy fan, especially those first three seasons pre Revival. And so last year for my podcast, I went back and revisited the very first season, truthfully expecting it to have aged very poorly. But honestly, Family Guy season one mostly holds up. And not only that, every episode had an intrinsically sweet quality that I think the series has moved away from over the last 20 years. So today, I want to take a trip down memory lane and talk about why I think the first season of Family Guy is pretty freaking sweet. Before we dive into the season itself, I want to go briefly over the show's history because it is pretty fascinating. In college, Seth MacFarlane created an animated short called The Life of Larry that is essentially proto-Family Guy. It's about a guy and his dog, the guy sounds just like Peter, the dog sounds just just like Brian, and they mostly watch TV together. There are a ton of gags in this short that would end up in the Family Guy pilot as well. This short film got Seth a job at Hanna-Barbera out of college, and eventually he made a sort of soft reboot of the life of Larry titled Larry and Steve. Honestly, Larry and Steve resembles Family Guy less than the original short. It aired on Cartoon Network's What a Cartoon, and feels much more like the type of kids-aimed content you'd find on Cartoon Network or WB back in the day than the show that it would evolve into eventually. After seeing these shorts, Fox execs contracted McFarlane to develop a series loosely based on the characters. Initially, they wanted to air them as shorts on their sketch series Mad TV, but they quickly realized that this was simply not in that budget. Eventually, Family Guy aired its pilot after the Super Bowl in 1999, and subsequently was picked up for an additional six episodes that aired later that year, rounding out an animation lineup that consisted of The Simpsons, King of the Hill, and newcomer Futurama. I mentioned up top that when I was younger, I loved Family Guy. I had those first three seasons on DVD and watched them religiously, along with the other three Fox animated series at the time, after the show's cancellation, I remember hearing the rumors that the show's popularity in syndication and on DVD might end up reviving the series, which at the time was simply unheard of. And though the show did eventually return with a fourth season to huge ratings, and I did enjoy it for a time, I eventually fell out of love with the series and even grew a bit of a disdain for it. I would parrot all the same criticisms you still hear, lazy cutaway gags, over-reliance on shock or offensive humor, etc. And I can't lie, I think South Park's portrayal of the series had a lot to do with pushing my opinions that direction. But eventually, I just left Family Guy behind, and I never really looked back, moving on to a long-standing obsession with Futurama. But over the past few years, I've been doing my podcast, Cartoons That Curse, with my homie Toonrific Tariq, and Tariq is an unabashed Family Guy stan. I remember watching his video on the episode Brian Wallows and Peter's Swallows and realizing, oh yeah, that was a great episode of television. And it made me think, huh, could those early episodes that I used to love so much actually hold up? So last year for Cartoons That Curse, Tariq and I covered Family Guy Season 1, and I honestly could not believe how much I loved it. That isn't to say there aren't things that don't hold up or have aged poorly. It was written in the late 90s, it's hard to find anything that doesn't have some marks against it from that era, but there was so much more to these first seven episodes than I ever remembered. I still remembered all the funniest cutaways and the dumbest jokes, but this time, what stood out was the heart and the focus the show had on its familial setting. Covering the series with Tariq also gave me a renewed perspective on what the show is actually about as well. Tariq made a video about this last year, and I want to encourage all of you to go check that out ASAP, but Tariq's read, which I love, is that the show is about a guy who was raised by all of these old school sitcom TV dads, and is using all of the things he learned from television to try and live his life and raise his kids. Wow, a show about a guy who struggles to differentiate real life from phony sitcom stories and tropes? Huh, no wonder I like this take. But think about it. Nearly every single episode in this first season starts with the family watching TV. There's a little TV in the Family Guy logo. Here, I mean, listen to Tariq break down the theme song. It's Peter and Lois asking, why aren't things like they used to be? Where did all of the old school TV dads go? What happened to all of the values that we grew up on? Well, lucky for us, there's somebody who still lives by those values. I think Family Guy is saying that a lot of the values that we grew up on are really toxic and when applied to your actual family would not fly. And I truly think this read is spot on, and it's especially showcased throughout these first seven episodes. In just about every single one, Peter approaches something from a poorly conceived sitcom-like angle 
pays a price for it, and learns to treat his family better through his failure. In the pilot, Death has a shadow, Peter drinks too much one night, falls asleep at work the next day, and loses his job. In order to try and provide for his family, he goes on welfare, and the welfare office accidentally sends him an obscene amount of money each week, an obvious mistake. Instead of doing the right thing and reporting the mistake, he takes the sitcom like a get-rich-quick scheme, lies to Lois about getting a promotion, and starts spending money to buy his family's love. In this episode, Peter makes an obvious and stupid mistake, but ends up trying to use it to connect with his family and provide them with the things he thinks they deserve. This, of course, nearly gets him sent to prison, and he learns his lesson. I cheated the government, and worst of all, I lied to my wife, and she deserves better. I'm sorry, honey. The second episode, I Never Met the Dead Man, is actually pretty directly about Peter's addiction to TV creating problems in his life. It's stopping him from spending time with his kids, particularly Meg, who's trying to learn to drive. When Peter crashes into the TV tower in town and knocks out cable, he promises to buy Meg a convertible if she takes the fall for it. Without TV, Peter actually starts going out and spending a ton of quality time with his family, though the episode also sees him go too far, refusing to listen to his family when they say they'd rather just relax for an evening and watch TV. But he, of course, learns a karmic lesson when Meg hits him with the car. You taught us all a valuable lesson. It's not what you do that defines the quality of your life, it's who you do it with. In the third episode, Chitty Chitty Deathbang, they're supposed to celebrate Stewie's birthday at Cheesy Charlie's. Lois makes it very clear that she's missed too much in previous birthdays doing all the work, and that it's incredibly important to her that they can actually spend quality time together celebrating. Unfortunately, Peter messes up and loses their reservation at Cheesy Charlie's. I really love this episode because Peter goes to great lengths to make things right for Lois by corralling a genuinely great birthday party at their place, but he also fundamentally fundamentally misunderstands what was so important about the party for Lois. He lets Meg go to a different event with her friends, which of course upsets Lois. We're also celebrating the day our family became whole. Today means nothing if Meg isn't here. And after going to pick up Meg to bring her back to the party, Peter finally understands why this is so important, and he helps Meg see it too. This day is more for your mom than it is for Stewie. Oh, with all she's given us, she ought to get whatever she wants. Are you noticing a pattern? While some newer Family Guy can be pretty mean-spirited, this early stuff always brought it back to the family's connection. Every episode and lesson is about them understanding each other better and becoming closer because of it. The Sun Also Draws focuses on Peter and Chris's relationship, as Chris is afraid to tell his dad he doesn't want to be in the Scouts anymore to focus on his drawing. But thank God that's not the case, huh? You're a Scout. And you know what that means? That means I love you. Eventually, Chris opens up to Peter, and even though he doesn't quite understand it, Peter shows his support for Chris. I, I probably don't say this often enough, but uh, I'm really proud of you, Chris. Thanks, Dad. The season finale is all about Peter and Brian, and throughout these early episodes, Brian effectively acts as Peter's conscience, constantly giving him advice and trying to stop him from saying stupid things. In this episode, Peter makes Brian perform in a dog competition, but feeling patronized, Brian bails. Me and the little shred of dignity I have left will be waiting in the car. And after Brian runs away, he's eventually arrested for not having proper documentation. Through the rest of the episode, Peter's hurt feelings about Brian bailing on the dog show prevent him from supporting his friend, until he realizes how important Brian is to him during the trial. The point is, he's a member of our family first and a dog second. And, and I'm real sorry I forgot that, buddy. The very end of the episode is really nice as well, as even after proving himself to be a person and above stereotypical dog behavior, Brian gives Peter a little lick on the cheek as a sign of their friendship. Honestly, these early Family Guy episodes can be so sweet. One might even say they're freaking sweet. That isn't to say they're perfect. There are plot lines that don't age well. The Sun Also Draws has a pretty poorly aged Native American vision quest plot line, and Brian Portrait of a Dog maybe draws a little too direct of a comparison between Brian's plight and the civil rights movement. And of course, there are just plenty of jokes that don't age well either. But for the most part, I really enjoyed the comedy in this first season. Yeah, it has all of the cutaways that the show has become known for, but generally they feel very closely tied to the plot at hand. A major part of the pilot is Lois's concern with Peter's drinking, and they rattle off three cutaways in succession all about exactly that, and they are honestly very funny. I especially loved this one. Whoa, is that really the blood of Christ? Yes. Man. That guy must have been wasted 24 hours a day, eh? And honestly, even more impressive is that in this cutaway, they snuck another very quick and hilarious gag in before this one. The Lord God smote poor Job with festering boils all over his body. Oh man, I hate it when he tells the story. People like to discredit the cutaway format, and I understand that it can get really tiresome and detract from the plot lines sometimes, but when they're done well, I think the format works great. The sheer variety of types of jokes they can tell in a single episode is sort of staggering, and when executed properly, they can actually 
actually add to the dilemma at hand rather than take away from it. I always loved this one when Peter is talking about trying to find new jobs after getting fired. And then I had that job as the sneeze guard for the salad bar at that restaurant. Ah. 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 Take it outside, lady. Sometimes the cutaways really can get away from the story at hand, but this entire episode is about Peter losing his job, so I think this one fits in really nicely. Another cutaway that's super funny and ties perfectly to the plot is in Chitty Chitty Deathbang, as Lois laments how she's missed out on so many big moments in her kids' lives because she's had to do all of the work for their parties. She misses Meg's first words and first steps while making the cake. What the hell are you doing in here, anyway? Alright, her first drum solo! That's a great cutaway gag, and it stems entirely from the dilemma that Lois is dealing with in the episode. There are also just really great visual gags, and these early episodes had more typical sitcom-like jokes as well. The thermostat bit in the pilot struck me as very stereotypical sitcom, but they did take it just a tad further. Brain implant, Meg. Every father's got one. Tells you when the children are messing with the dial. Hey, Peter, my thing went off. Your thermostat okay? There's some pretty instantly funny character comedy. Peter is incredibly stupid, but often in an endearing way. You're fired! Ha, huh, jeez, for how long? And honestly, diabolical evil genius Stewie was so funny. Isn't he adorable playing with his Sesame Street phone? Put me through to the Pentagon! In general, I really loved how they handled Stewie in these early episodes. I'm not sure if Evil Baby Genius is something they could have maintained through the entire series, but the way they incorporate him into these seven is so great. In a handful of these episodes, Stewie has some kind of personal vendetta that he's crafting a scientific device for, and then that device's functionality has a major impact on the storyline and play. In the pilot, he's got a mind control ray, and when the judge is about to send Peter and Lois to prison, Stewie uses the device on him and he changes his mind. I like this one because it's not made explicitly clear if the device worked or if the judge just had a change of heart looking at Stewie, as he claims. However, a handful of the devices unequivocally work. In the second episode, Stewie's vendetta is against Broccoli, and it causes him to create a weather-changing device so he can cause freezing rain that prevents Broccoli from growing. But that rainstorm is what causes Meg to accidentally hit Peter while she's practicing driving also killing William Shatner. The craziest is in the episode Mind Over Murder, though, which nearly ends with Peter and Lois burning to death in Peter's makeshift basement bar, but Stewie's time machine reverses the entire episode, bringing them back to one of the opening scenes and preventing the events of the episode from ever happening. Even though this one strayed a bit from the heartfelt lessons that I appreciated in the rest of the season, I think it's more the exception that proves the rule, because it's also one of my favorites. There's this amazing sequence set to a piano rendition of the Family Guy theme while Lois makes dinner and Peter builds his bar, and it's just kind of lovely. So, yeah, I honestly think there's a ton of merit to these earliest Family Guy episodes. A lot of the criticisms and stereotypes that you hear about the series just don't really hold up when looking at this early stuff. A lot of the humor is very dumb, but I don't think there's anything wrong with that, especially because so much of the core of the season is rooted in these heartfelt moments, truly built around a guy learning to be closer with his family. A real Family Guy, you might say. <laughs> He said it! He said it! I also want to give another big shout out to Tariq. He does a ton of great Family Guy videos, and even if you aren't a huge fan of the show, they are very worth checking out. The show is such a long and varied history, it's really cool to see how the show has evolved over 20 plus years. I haven't revisited any Family Guy in season 2 or beyond, but I probably will at some point. And who knows, if y'all like this, maybe I'll talk Family Guy again. Let me know if that interests you in the comments below. Alright, peace! Johnny! Two